Hello, um, I'm Boyd Hilton and I'm joined by Emma Tennant, who uh, has bravely and boldly got up this early. And as I have you all, thank you very much. Um, nine o'clock is a very early start, I feel, but we've done it. And we're all snubbing Kevin Spacey as well. So <laughs> I think we all deserve to, uh, well, I don't know, to be very happy about that and to be proud and bold. And in many ways, Emma is more interesting than Kevin Spacey, I think. Um, we'll find out in the next hour. Um, before we... Uh, go into some deep probing uh, questions about the UK TV network. Let's have a look at some highlights of your stuff uh, over the last year. So where do I start? I want this to be amazing for everyone. I'd like to get started, okay? Let's do it. This is my chance to shine. Absolutely sensational. Okay, I'm impressed. <laughs> that is awesome! Yes. Love it. Tremendous. Don't even feckin' think about it. <laughs> the most incredible news. Someone's died and you'd be left a new mop. Ow! It's gorgeous. What a fireplace. Absolutely beautiful. Comedians really are the most extraordinary creatures, unlike anything else on Earth. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! You're amazing. Do you like? Yes. Yeah, you like? Yes. Good. OK. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, my God. Dude, you're crazy, man. It's really, truly majestic. Exactly. Want to see some more? Oh, God, yes. How can you be so calm? Well, this has been very interesting. It's powerful. It's astounding. Look out! So there we go. So you've got 10 channels um, to look yes. after. More than any other, a higher number than any other person appearing on stage at the TV Festival this year. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you closed Blighty and you, opened, and you launched drama. What was the thinking behind closing Blighty and launching drama? Well, I, they were two separate things, to be honest. Um, uh, obviously, you know, being a commercial organisation, we have to sort of, our channels have to stand up commercially. And unfortunately, Blighty just wasn't cutting through to the level that, that we needed it to. So, so the decision was made um, to close that. Um, in, in terms of drama, when we, we were looking across the portfolio and, and also looking at our programme supply, um, we obviously have a, an agreement with the BBC for a programme licence agreement with the BBC for uh, content. And uh, looking at where we could... Um, uh, best to exploit both the programme supply and also where we felt there was um, audiences to be gained. And for us, uh, drama was an, was an obvious move, really. Um, although in the free view space, not in the pay space, we'd, we'd tried using some of that BBC drama product in pay before and it wasn't really working. It's not really what the pay audience uh, is looking for. Right. Uh, and But in the free view space, we felt there was there was a definite opportunity. So, um, so we, you know, we pulled together the drama proposition and um, launched it about six, seven weeks ago now. Um, and we're, we're exceedingly pleased. It's, you know, it's performing very well for us ahead of where we'd hoped. So, you know, it's an exciting yeah. thing to do. Yeah. It's always exciting to launch a new channel. Yeah. And you talked about there how, um, you know, the distribution of the, of the different channels. I know they're all on Virgin and Sky now, yeah. aren't they? But it varies whether they're on UView and all of that. How, do, you have, do you think long and hard about how you're going to distribute all of them in the, in the different way? Well, we, I mean, basically, we want as many people to see as many of our channels yeah. as possible uh, and the channel brands to get out there and, you know, people are viewing in different ways. So, you know, to move with technology and... And allow people to see to see as as much of our programming as possible. Um, we are a, a pay provider as well as a free view provider. We're one of the few people that sort of mm. in the, in both those environments. Um, so we've now got four uh, free view channels and and six in pay. 
Um, we've launched uh, Dave on Freeview, uh, on sorry, UView uh, recently. Um, got a great EPG position. We're very pleased with that, and really, in yesterday, we'll be coming later this year. Um, and we've got catch-up services uh, and uh, VOD services on on Talk, 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 and BT. So it and they will be editorialised so that you can have some exclusivity depending on the okay. on the platform right. that you're right. that you're on. But really, it's about trying to get as many people into the, the brands and the channels and the programming as we can. And in terms of um, your overall performance, as you quite rightly boasted in that, uh, it, it, you've had the highest ratings ever and. The, the share has gone up and all of that. What do you put that down to? And what are the big, what have been the kind of the real big successes would you think you'd pick out? Um, I mean, it's, we had a great year last year. Obviously, it was digital switch off last year as well. Um, so we uh, grew by 10% last year, which is uh, fantastic. Um, and, you know, the, the viewing figures have continued to grow this year. We're still getting our, our highest ever figures. I suppose the really um, great thing for us is that it's been across a number of, Places it hasn't just been, you know, one channel um, pushing forward. Yesterday had a had a great year last year, but equally, you know, really um, launched in um, Freeview the year before. So that that drove a, a lot of figures through. Dave this year has had uh, its best year ever and is now the biggest non PSB channel in the UK. Um, so you know, and it's had a spectacular. A year, we're still, you know, number one in lifestyle with with home, um, and um, yeah. So we're, we've had uh, real growth across mm. all the <coughs> across all the networks. I mean, that was extraordinary because you had Shocky Walky Walky Doodah. You had previous series, and then you kind of this this series turned into a much more A-list celebrity. Kind yeah, of we event. sort of we supersized this yes. series, and um, we've done that with a few things this year. Actually, we did it with um, uh, the Rue Scholarship as well. Uh, so you know. Uh, Chockey previously had been a series just on good food um, and a, a shorter run, sort of half-hour series. This, this year, we superstized it. We made 10 one-hours. We got uh, A-list talent, including Hollywood talent, involved. It had a more international feel. And the, the thing we were able to do with that and with Rue, actually, was, was serve two audiences, in fact. We, we, we not only served a sort of more niche good food audience uh, where the show premiered, but also the broader entertainment audience on Watch, um, where the show also uh, played and, um, and was very successful. Mm. So uh, it was about you know, making that show a bit more entertaining, focused, a bit more international, bigger in scale, and also that, that's led to more successful international sales as well. So that show's now sold in over 30 countries. So was that a cunning plan from the start that you've worked both of those shows? You thought, well, we can start it small um, with the Food Channel and then make it bigger for, for Watch? Or did, did the production company go, do you, you do realise we could get Whoopi Goldberg involved in this series? Well, I think it's a combination of things. I mean, obviously, you, you start with some shows and, and then you, you don't realise, you know, when you the first incarnation, you have to see how it will how it will bed in and if it can grow and then and then you know creatively you realize you can take it it bigger into more spaces with the chalky team obviously they start when we started they were one shop in in brighton yeah. you know a small chocolatiers now then they've moved to london and opened a, a shop there um and you know their appeal is going more and more international and it was a conversation working closely with the uh, production company in terms of you know, building this show, uh, building it out, and you know, making more international appeal as well. Mm. We mentioned all of your different channels. I, I also want to ask you about this whole idea of the UK TV as a brand. You've kind of revitalised. Yes. And what was the thinking behind that? And it's on. There's an on-screen identity of UK TV. Yes. Yeah, so we've relaunched the sort of UK TV brand this year. Um, one of the things we we did some research uh, first on a business-to-business -business basis around. Uh, uh, the understanding of UK TV as a brand, and, and we found that there was there was a, a lot of warmth for uh, UK TV as a brand, the the and the individual channels, uh, and a lot of support. But what if, what we discovered is because people were dealing with individual channels or groups of channels, even in some of our business to business places, there there wasn't the understanding that we were a whole group. Mm. And actually the power of that group when you put it together and realise, you know, we're getting more than five percent share or eight percent share of shot socky last year, uh, but also, you know, how we operate 
in the industry um, is a really powerful thing. And actually, by bringing some of that together and the understanding of that together in a business-to-business -business level um, would be helpful. And so that's how it started. But then, obviously, when you start that process, you realise that it will at some point and has to uh, come across to consumers as yeah, well. Yeah. And one of the key things as well was about trying to help people, uh, viewers, navigate around the network. You know, so you're watching something on, on Dave and we're cross-promoting a show on Eden or on Good mm. Food. And, and viewers, we were getting some feedback that some viewers were a little bit confused by that not because they didn't know the connections. Sure. So making that a little more obvious actually helps viewers understand we don't have the benefit of the sort of, you know, ITV3 or E4, no, you know, no. those very obvious um, monikers that mm. help people you understand. You have attempted to put UK in front of every single channel and, and bring it or something well, like that? Well, we had that before yeah. and that's what we, and what we didn't want actually is the channel brands, I think, are really strong and stand, stand for something and stand, you know, stand up on their own and need to. So it was more just a, a, a watermark, if you like, sure. like a gold standard. And so there is a slight, you know, UK TV will come up after each bumper for about two or three seconds and then it will morph right. into the channel brand. And when we're doing cross-promotion, you'll have a UK TV logo there, but then you'll have the channel logos. Yes. Um, so it is, we didn't want to really ram it at people. We think there's, it's hard enough to get people to, uh, to connect with your brands yeah. without yeah. trying to sure. overlay another brand sure. as well. Let's um, uh, look at your um, original content, some of your original content. Let's look at this particularly ambitious show, um, The Incredible Mr. Goodwin. Yeah. Standing by to arm. Arming now. Armed. Arm. Standing by to trigger. Good. Oh, come on. <laughs> 25 seconds. 20 seconds. 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, Come on. seven, Come on. Four, five, four, three, two, one, go. makes me work nervous, even though yeah. I know it's going to be okay. Terrifying, <laughs> terrifying. Um, so that struck, struck me as a show that, because Dynamo has been a huge hit for you on watch, yep. absolutely massive, and that felt like a, a, an attempt to do a similar thing, but it wasn't all good news, because that didn't rate anywhere near as well as Dynamo. Were you disappointed in that performance of the show, and is it a thing that you want to bring back? Will you, will you stick with it, or do you think you have to move on? It was, uh, it, it didn't do as well as Dynamo, but I think it is, you know, an incredible piece of television. We were, we're very, very proud of it at, at UK TV. I think, you know, the ambition always was to not, we didn't want to replicate Dynamo, we've got that, we didn't, mm. you know, you don't want to do the same thing, but we did want uh, a show that would have that sort of scale and ambition and that talkability, that sort of heart in your mouth, how, how on earth does he do that, you know, the, the, um, the thing you want to tweet about and talk about the next day, and I think we really succeeded with that. Um, it's also, um, sold, as I say, really well internationally. Right. In fact, international sales this year has been our fastest growing revenue stream. Um, so we're, we're, really, we're really proud of it, and it obviously did, did uh, perform above slot. Um, we're not, we haven't yet made a final decision on whether okay. we're going to bring it back okay. yet. So does that, in that, generally, in kind of when you're making a decision to, to bring a show back, if it's not obviously a huge hit, um, but it is selling internationally, is that all, that's what you have to, you have to kind there's of balance a, all those There's a balance things. of all, all, all different things, um, because, you know, as a business as a whole, yes, it's about linear performance, but also um, what else does it say about us as a business? What other areas of the business can we, can we experiment in? Cool. Let's have a look at another clip of, 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 of quite a famous person who's on um, your network, David Attenborough. The lifespan of animals varies enormously. Amongst mammals, a tiny little shrew like this lives just two or so years, while a giant whale can reach the age of 100. Lifestyle is an important factor in defining lifespan. A shrew 
has a fast and furious life, producing many young, of which few survive. Whales, on the other hand, breed slowly and don't have many predators. Generally, big animals live longer. So it's very odd indeed that mole rats live up to nine times longer than any other similarly sized rodent. So obviously we're used to seeing um, that iconic figure on BBC One, but is, is it hard for you to get someone like that, a, a level of talent like that on a channel like Eden, or is actually, is he excited and happy to do a different kind of show? Uh, he was really excited to do it. Also, it was a sort of passion project for him, which was great. It's a, it's a thing he's always been fascinated in, these sort of anomalies of the animal kingdom. Um, and so given the opportunity to do a, a show around that, where we did, we did five uh, half hours and he featured uh, two, ups, two animals per show. Um, and it, it's funny, we went out for lunch with him after we finished the series. And even then, he was, you know, at lunch speaking to his producer and, and uh, we're now doing a second series and we've, we've doubled the run. We're doing 10, um, 10 and a half hours now. But he was there still going, silkworms. <laughs> oh, and, and you know, he's, he's got a real uh, enthusiasm and passion for it. So it, it was great to work with him. And, you know, and the ambition at UK TV really is to work with the very best talent where, wherever we can. You know, and obviously working with David Attenborough, who's like natural history royalty, yeah. uh, is, is incredible. Natural history god, really. Yes. Yeah. And we've been able to do that, you know, on, on Dave as well. And, you know, the sort of level of talent that we're, that we're working with, we really are competing with the, the terrestrials, you know, in terms of ideas and, and talent. And you get to have lunch with David Attenborough. And you get to have lunch with David Attenborough, which That's is pretty good. very exciting. Yeah. Um, let's talk about acquisitions now. And um, let's start with this um, big hit show on Dave Suits. We need to get him away from his father. I need to get him away. I set the hearing and I'm going to win. I'm hearing a lot of eyes in there. Harvey, this isn't housing court. This is a kid's life. I know that. And the only reason you know that is because I gave a shit about this kid's life in the first place. You think I didn't think I was smarter than the guy I started working for? I did. And I was. And I waited my goddamn turn. Harvey, I'm ready. It's time to let me out of the gate. Allison's filing a motion to dismiss. She's swinging for the fences. I'll give her that. You know what? I'm going to swing for the fences, too. Mike's going to court. I am? What's the case? Uh, emancipation. From him? I wish. He doesn't need a court order for that. My little baby's growing up. OK. Listen, I need you to sign this affidavit that we never received that memo from Coastal Motors. So I remember when, Dave, when Suits launched on Dave, and I thought it was just an odd idea that, you, that Dave would have an American drama series. So obviously, we're used to the panel shows and all of that. And yeah. Was it, did it seem like a weird idea to you from the start? <laughs> or do you think, oh, yeah, we've got this American drama. That's going to fit. No, I think we, we really wanted to you know, expand the, the remit of Dave, really, and push at the boundaries. You know, we, we were very much known for sort of panel shows and Top Gear. Um, but it was important for us that we... We, um, we expanded that. And the great thing about Suits is that it had the right wit and cleverness. You know, it was uh, a slick drama, but it was uh, not an out-and-out -out comedy drama, but it was quick and witty mm. and sharp. And that f fitted w with, the Dave, with the Dave brand for us. And it's been a great success. Obviously, we, you know, we played Series 2 this year. We've got a multi-season deal for it. Um, season two performed just as well as season one, which was a, which was a great hit for us. And, it's, and, and that's allowed us to, to think more broadly about the Dave brand and keep pushing at the edges. So in terms of other acquisitions, things like Storage Hunters and Lizard Lake Towing, for more for Daytime and Shoulder Peak this year. You know, Storage Hunters has been an incredible hit. You know, got over, it's got over a million viewers um, at times, which, uh, which has been great. But I think, again, that... The reason that show's worked so well is because there's such a, strain, a strong frame around Dave. There's yeah. such a clear understanding uh, for the audience about what Dave's about. So you put something like Storage Hunters on, and people immediately know what lens to view it through, if you like. We're, you know, that, that you're expecting to sort of almost see these characters slightly tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. Um, that, that it's about the, the fast talk and the banter mm rather than, you know, that, that we're taking this show incredibly seriously. Sure. Um, with a show, like that that, show like Suits, so interesting, because that's a show that has a great appeal to women. I mean, it's got two hot blokes in it, and, yep. you know, the stories are 
kind of universal type of things. So is that a show that women are coming to? And does that mean that Dave is, you know, I, I see it as being a, a, a show aimed at people like me, really, in a way. But is it, is, does that mean you're kind of broadening out the remit in a way? Yeah, I mean, Dave's always done this incredibly clever trick, which when I was on other channels uh, aiming for a sort of more male audience but really not wanting to completely exclude women we could never work out how they did it but it it has it's never excluded women it's been a, a channel that men feel is for them yeah. but women don't feel excluded from right. and and a drama like suits does that perfectly lots of women come to it um it's slightly more male than female but not massively um it's that dual watch in the evening it's clever, it's funny, it's sexy. Yeah. Let's have a look at another acquisition. This one was on yesterday, and it's called The Secret Life of Henry VIII. Henry moves on to his next wife and damage control for his manly image. He marries Jane Seymour 10 days after Anne's execution. And he has pictures painted that show himself with one of the largest cod pieces in the world. The picture that we have by Holbein, it's to be seen by the very people who'd heard him accused of impotency. I'm really convinced that Henry is doing a propaganda campaign on the court to try and whitewash the whole thing and say, you never heard this. It's not true. Yeah, a series about the real life tawdry sex lives of uh, great <laughs> historical figures. What could go wrong? Yeah. We're basically doing Heat magazine on, uh, on um, famous historical Genius. figures. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just Henry VIII, there was a whole, whole series, but it, it, you know, it's a, a show that yesterday you know, had an on, on screen rebrand last year and you know, repositioned as you know, entertainment inspired by history. And so the way, the sorts of shows that we are looking for for yesterday now and that we're, we're acquiring and, and we're also doing more um, uh, pre-sales and um, top-up funding for shows, it are shows that sort of speak to, to that. So it's new ways of telling stories, um, new ways of presenting history, um, either sort of in, in format and style um, and, and different type styles of stories. So, um, you know, looking at... at historical people with that sort yeah. of lens was, was a great way to do it. And we did the great press thing, our PR department, uh, you know, reimagined what these people would look like in the modern day, and that, and that got great press Absolutely, as well. Yeah, yeah. So when you go to LA for the, for the screenings and you've got all of your different channels and you're looking at possible acquisitions for all of them, is it possible to have like a clear strategy of what you're looking for? And, or is it, you just kind of like go, right, yeah, that'll do for that channel, and yes, that'll be great for that channel? <laughs> well, you, you, know, you know which channels you're looking for before you go and the right. types, of, types of programming that, that would work for your channels. I mean, our channels are you know, quite distinctive in, in, what they're, in their needs. Um, we were very pleased this year at, at the screenings to pick up um, King and Maxwell for Alibi, which we've just announced this week. So um, obviously... Um, uh, Alibi is a crime drama channel. Yep. The shows that have worked really well for us, um, you know, uh, Rizzoli and Isles, Castle, Body of Proof, which we've been able to premiere in the UK ahead of, ahead of Terrestrials, which has been great. So another crime mm. show. Um, and from David Baldacci, you know, it, it's always great when you've got the books already because the, yes. the, that fan base, that fan that, base yeah. and we found that they're very responsive so we found that with um, Rizzoli and ours especially where there's already a yeah. canon of books well let's have a quick clip of Body of Proof to show the kind of show that's on Alibi where it doesn't belong. Now I have your daughter. And you're gonna do exactly what I say or else she dies. Sorry about playing that clip uh, this, this early in the morning. Um, I meant to warn you, but what could you have done? You can walk out, that would be rude. Um, so talk about what kind of, so that show, which is a very insane show, but what, when you're looking at 
different types of crime drama for alibi. Is there a type of well, why that one, for example, and not say I don't know Hannibal's a big crime drama on on, which is on Living Sky Living? You know, do you have a, a particular niche in that world you're looking for? I think, as I say, if there's um, uh, it's based on books, that's that's always a great thing. Um, Procedural crime drama that has a beginning, middle, and end in okay. each episode works very well for Alibi. It's harder for um, for channels in purely in pay, I think, to have those um, l big story arcs that don't have those elements in each in yeah. each episode to keep yeah. people hooked in. And what is the biggest hit among all those? Is, is it, what's the one that really punches through? Body of Proof was the biggest performing um, show for uh, for Alibi last year, but. Um, Castle and Rosalie and Isles all do, both do extremely well as well. We're looking forward to King and Maxwell. We, we think it's going to be a big hit for us. And do you ever get stuff? Do you see stuff in, at the screen and you think, and, and, and you go after it and someone else has got it? And would you, ever, would you ever admit to stuff that you think? Is there anything on particularly on the other channels that you wanted and you didn't get? Um, you obviously compete for for um, for shows, and you know some distributors are here who are, I know who will know we've competed for shows we haven't necessarily got, but. Um, you know, it, it's uh, there. There are probably a couple of things, but also we, because our channels are quite defined, we we sometimes go for things that aren't necessarily uh, broad enough for mm. other channels. So right. we, we have a sort of we're able to be a bit more selective sure. at times. Sure. Well, let's move on to um, what's coming up, and obviously. I guess the main thing we need to talk about is what kind of things you're looking for, which yeah. we'll definitely get to in depth. But um, first, let's talk about what stuff you've already commissioned and that we can look forward to and that you've announced. Um, this is a really interesting thing, this Ross Noble freewheeling, which we'll have a look at the clip and then we can talk about that. So what are you guys doing here? I'm making a TV show called Ross Noble's Hanging Baskets of Britain, Britain's Greatest Illuminated Trees. Ross Noble's Amateur Hurdlers, One Man and His Dogging. So what am I filming? At this point, you're probably thinking, blimey, Ross doesn't off look like that bloke off coast when I'm not him. And while we're on it, I'm not one of the hairy bikers either, so don't start that. It's a travel show, but it's a completely random travel show where I have no final destination or pre-planned route. You're the guy that does the coast on television. In this show, instead of a guidebook, I'm going to be using nothing but suggestions from Twitter, which means that anyone can tweet me and it can change the course of the entire show. Hairy biker! Every day, just one man and his motorbike alone on the road. I oh, will be taking them as well, though. So that's a show that's seemingly predicated on the idea that anything can happen, totally yes. random. Did you need to be convinced that that's, that's going to... Were you worried that it might just end up being him ramp walking around and nothing much is going to happen? Well, there is that slight worry, although with Ross Noble, I think even if you try to make it more structured, anything could still happen. Uh, so it was really based on the fact that, you know, Ross Noble's been known to do a whole show off a receipt that he's found in his pocket. So trying to contain what he may or may not do uh, was going to be very difficult. So to make a virtue of it, you'd say, right, well, you know, what would you like to do and how can we, how can we work around it? And, you know, celebrating the most uh, random and best bits of, of Britain, but being led by his followers and his fans was great. So, you know, he's... At uh, one minute, he's sent. He decides to go because uh, he gets a, a text to judge a craft show of a, the WI in Macclesfield, and ends up being bound up by a woman with a massive knitted scarf. Uh, to going to make a speech at a wedding of a complete stranger. Um, it's it's just this sort of lovely meander ramble through the UK, which is which is very funny and and endearing as well, and really shows his character as a, you know, him as a really endearing character as well. I mean, it does look great. I guess that's the, that's the kind of commission that's entirely built around the talent, and that's all about him. Yeah. And I, I know you've got another show, Krakenori, which feels yeah. like it's all about the concept. Um, yeah, updating. so we're, we're, um, we're announcing today that we've commissioned Krakenori for Dave, so it's uh, uh, six 40-minute shows coming this autumn, obviously sort of based around Jack and Ori. There'll be um, two stories per um, episode um, written by some of the best comedy writers uh, in the UK and presented by some great talent, including um, Jack D, Harry Enfield, uh, Sally Phillips and Richard Hammond, and there's some more to be announced. And it's that sort of slightly dark twisted uh, uh, tales, uh, satirical. So it'll, it's the, the 
the talent telling the story, and it will be uh, supplemented by some live action and also animation. We um, we piloted it with uh, Harry Enfield, and as and as soon as I saw it, you know, it was uh, it just completely drew you in. I mean. I grew up obviously with Jack and Ori. Yeah, me too. Um, but it, it's, you know, the story just took you in new and unexpected directions. Uh, Harry's, uh, Harry's presentation was um, amazing and, you know, uh, just, you just wanted more as soon as you saw it. And um, I think you'll be really interested to see it and excited to see it, especially as apparently one episode you feature in. No. Yes. Why? One about Twitter. Oh and, my God. Uh, and apparently Boyd Hilton is a, a starring character. Wow. That's exciting. Obviously, that's more exciting for me than anyone else. It's <laughs> only exciting for me and not anyone else. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled for that. That's the first time I've heard of me being on the show. Which episode is that, then? Who's, I don't you know. Tell me that? I can't tell you no, which God. episode yet, but we'll How exciting. get you more um, information. Totally. Um, so I'll definitely be reviewing that. Um, <laughs> You've also had other shows. You've done very well with Red Dwarf, bringing that back, and that's yep. been absolutely massive. Yes, Prime Minister, perhaps less, less of a huge success. How, how did you feel that went? Um, we were really pleased with... I mean, to work with the original writers, again, was great, and it's, you know, to bring a, a show of that calibre back, you know, was, was a huge coup for us. Uh, and, you know, really did make a massive splash to be mentioned in uh, Prime Minister's Question Time oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, on the front page of the Telegraph was, uh, was an amazing thing. It did bring in a, a, um, a very ABC One audience um, and brought a lot of new viewers into gold. And part of what, you know, what that was about was trying to bring new people back to gold and, and remind them about why they love the programming goal. Goal does a fa fantastic job for us. It's going to be 21 years old this wow. uh, November. Um, so it's one of the longest serving channels in the UK, I suppose, in the digital space. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, people, there's a real warmth and, and love for gold. Christmas is always a time where gold does amazingly well. It's that family yeah. feeling, people come back. And you have these, these great um, kind of retrospective look back at Forty Towers and the yes. Royal Family, and you know you've got a new one coming up with the two Ronnies. Which we've got, we've got the two Ronnies, which we've got a clip of. Um, we did uh, Morecambe and Wise last yes. year, yes. Um, and this year we've got uh, the two Ronnies spectacle where we are not only um, sort of looking at known footage from, from the two Ronnies um, and celebrating the archive, but also there's uh, footage unseen on television before, and we've got Ronnie Corbett involved. So you've got you've got that um, first-hand uh, testimony of work, you know how their relationship worked, um, and you know how that and you know how it was to create yeah. create that comedy. Let's gold. have a look. There was a sale at CNA. <laughs> Competent poltroon, so you fail to obtain me divorce. Oh, will I never be rid of this accursed queen? I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> For thy failure, thou shalt be boiled in oil, flogged and hung in chains. Oh, a party I'll change. <laughs> because we're so comfortable with each other, we look like we've been doing that sketch for longer than four nights, four days rehearsal, and, and the comfort with the costumes of the trains and switching them around and knowing how long it would take before you could turn it around. You know, no, good, very good. <laughs> oh, you look lovely tonight, Anne. It's a nice dress you've nearly got on. Let's have a look at you, let's have a look at you. Hmm, don't know which I prefer, East Berlin or West Berlin. <laughs> I don't think this has ever been on the box, you know, or if it has, I haven't... S oh! My God, that's me! <laughs> For a long time now, one thing has stood in the way of our happiness. I know, I must cut out potatoes, I really must. <laughs> I don't remember doing any of this. Oh, I am to be wed to the desirable Anne. Oh, head, stop pounding. Oh, heart, stop beating. And the rest of you, good luck to the winning! <laughs> have a Henry VIII theme, don't There we? is a Henry VIII theme. You love Henry VIII. You could have a Henry VIII channel. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Um, so is that a new kind of model for a kind of nostalgic clip show where you, know, that kind of, where you involve the talent and you literally have the talent washing their own stuff? Yeah, back? I mean, it, it, we did this bit with Morecambe and Wise as well, although it was obviously we couldn't involve the talent directly, but people who'd work with yes. them and, you know, their peers. 
Um, and, uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, that was really funny that she couldn't actually remember no. that she'd done it. Um, but And also, you know, able to... We've been able to uh, access thing, footage through the estate, estates of Morecambe and Wise and also... Uh, in this show that hasn't been seen on television before. So that was a stage show. So, you know, to bring the real fans things that they haven't been able to see before and insight from people who were around and worked on it at the time, yeah. I think yeah. is really great. Absolutely, yeah. You've got another big show coming up um, which combines two classic elements, food and travel, yeah. involving Valentine Warner. Let's have a look at this. I'm travelling from Denmark to Norway to Sweden, from summer through to winter, to bring delicious recipes from Scandinavia to your kitchen. I can't wait to see the evening unfold. I know that some real magic is going to come out of this kitchen. And now for the fun bit, in with the nails. So I'm doing a little bit of forest floor with kale, which I think will go very well with the quite strong capercaillie meat. I'm very excited about this. So that's interesting, because it's not just some bloke cooking in a little kitchen set somewhere. No. It's a whole big, epic visual yes. feel. And, uh, you know, uh, Scandinavian food is sort of the, the coolest food at the moment. On and trend. On trend, and so the fact that we've been filming it for six to nine months is, oh, well. you know, we're already ahead of the curve, which is great. Um, uh, no, we're, you know, the, as I say, the food shows for us are sort of moving on. They're less just sort of chop and chat and more, you know, more of about the travel, about the environment. Um, we did this Hairy Bikers last year, yep. Hairy Bikers in Mississippi, um, which again played, you know, on watch as well as on good food. So it's about, you know, how we, you know, we've got a strong history of lifestyle shows on, in UK TV, but it's about how we extend that, I suppose, and how we take it into a new space and new, new formats, as well as using key talent, because, you know, for the good food audience, having well-known key chefs is, you know, is, is another uh, key driver for them. Absolutely. And so before we go on to what you're looking for, I guess the key the key message. Is there anything else you want to mention? Any other, any other shows coming up that, uh, that we haven't mentioned? Um, I've put you on the spot there. You have I? put me yeah, on the sorry. spot. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure <laughs> that you've got it all out. I'm to shout something out. I just wanted to make sure we've got it all out there, everything you wanted to mention. We've got, yes, I mean, the, another big show for us this autumn uh, on Gold is a uh, the first time we've done a brand new sitcom. Oh. Uh, so we've got You, Me and Them coming on gold in the autumn uh, from Hattrick. It's uh, a family comedy with an age gap relationship at, it, at its centre. Um, so the, that's quite a big step to have an original sitcom on. Yeah, an uh, original sitcom. It, I think the, the, you know, the traditional family comedy will will appeal to the to the gold audience, but also it's got, it's got a broad appeal. We've got Anthony Head... Uh, and Lindsay Duncan as, as uh, to the key cast members, um, which I, I always want to say Anthony Head heading up the cast, but it sounds wrong to yeah, say that. No, no. So, um, uh, so you, we're really excited about about that this autumn, um, and um, you know, as we said, we've got uh, we've got Ross Noble coming on Dave. We've got uh, also Dave Gorman on on Dave this autumn. Um, we've got new David Attenborough next year, so that, mm. there's a lot coming through. So bearing all that in mind, everything that we've seen, the fact that you're now commissioning original sitcoms, are you open to, it seems to me, you've got, you're covering pretty much every genre you can think of one way or another, are you open to big original commissions in most of those different genres? Is that, is that what you're looking for? Or is there yeah. a more specific kind of show you're looking for? Well, we, it, you know, it varies on the, on the channel, obviously. What, the thing that we need is, is big, ambitious ideas, ideas that will that will really cut through. I don't want people to think, because we are, are um, you know, they might think of us as smaller channels, that therefore the ideas need to be smaller, that they don't. You know, we've seen that, we've shown that with Dynamo, we've shown that with Goodwin, um, we've shown that with the, the shows we're doing for Dave, you know, uh, or even, you know, the way we do, do cookery. Mm. It, it's big, bold ideas that we need. Um, so don't be scared to be ambitious. And have you got bigger budgets for that for that as well? Have you got you know? Can you spend the money on the? We, well, budget? obviously, we, you know, we do. It's a uh, it's about the the quality of the show on screen. Um, so, um, for for the specifically for the channels, you know, obviously on Dave, the key 
key talent is, is great. Um, but as we said, ways of broadening the brand a bit, taking uh, a slightly new direction, pushing uh, those, those, either those talents or uh, the stories out in new ways. You know, doing maths with Dara mm. was, you know, you getting Dara Breen's great, but doing a comedy show about maths, you wouldn't think it, it no, would work, but no. we're just commissioned the third series, so, you know, we're very excited about that. Um, for Watch, you know, Watch is about not only people who have um, extraordinary talents, like the Dynamos or the Johnson Goodwins, but it's also about finding the extraordinary in the everyday. So finding precincts in the, in the everyday where, where the extraordinary exists. And you could say that, you know, people like Chocky Wocky, you know, it's a, it's mm. a chocolatiers or a cake makers, but, you know, they do extraordinary things and there are extraordinary characters there. So, so for Watch, that's, that's the sort of thing we're looking mm. for. And it would be great to find a, a fact end piece to sit at sort of nine o'clock for Watch. So if someone had a, um, like a, you know, a great sitcom idea or something and, and they thought maybe that might work on Dave, for example, even though you haven't yet commissioned a sitcom, would, yep. would, do you think they should send it in to you and your people? Yes. Is that the kind of you're open to all kinds of yes, different... Yes, definitely. Um, and you know, the, what you should do if you've got ideas for UK TV is uh, send them in to uh, Tanya Qureshi in our commissioning team. If you go to our website and on the commissioning page, there's all the details of how to... Um, get hold of Tanya and where to send ideas. Those ideas will be logged. They'll be directed to the right commissioner. They'll be brought into the editorial meetings where, where we'll sit down and discuss them together and, uh, and then we'll, we'll move them forward from there. Are ad-funded projects, is that a big appeal to you? Does that yes, make stuff easier to commission? We're still looking for ad-funded projects. Um, we've done a, a few in the last year. We, last year we did the, the first ever... Um, Product Place Factual Series, uh, Find My Pass, we've done two series of that. So um, we're open to that. We've got uh, a couple of people who work specifically on ad funding, so have a lot of relationships built up. Um, so again, ideas come through Tanya, but um, they'll be directed to the ad funding. Sure. Yeah. I will throw it open to, um, to you guys in a second. Just, I'm interested in, without wanting to end on negative, is there any stuff, kind of thing you're not looking for, people should avoid even bothering with you with, and are there kind of pitching ideas that really annoy you and exasperate you? <laughs> or the kind of way stuff is pitched to you that annoys you? Uh, well, but if people don't really, haven't watched the channels, don't, right. don't <laughs> That's sort a of understand yeah. uh, what the channels are about, are things that, that don't feel ambitious really I feel a bit pedestrian um so we, we are really looking for those ideas that feel a bit different or characters um so okay but other than that we're you know we're open for as many ideas as possible so people shouldn't send a comedy idea for yesterday for example they should probably no they should no. think about they which think channel about to put doing. it for yeah. cool let's um let's see if there are any questions from the audience if you put the lights on someone that can see. Oh, yes there you go Morning. Hello. Morning. Uh, Emma, uh, you sort of briefly touched on it, but I, I was in, interested to talk about drama in terms of... Uh, it, it seems like it's doing quite well in the ratings, and obviously, um, you know, it's up against channels like ITV3. I just wondered if you could sort of share your thoughts on um, the, the launch, you know, since, uh, since it, it, it started. Yeah, we, we were um, very pleased with the launch. Uh, uh, obviously, it was helped by a 12-foot Mr. Darcy uh, in the Serpentine, which uh, our press team uh, put together that idea and uh, managed to go global with Mr. Darcy. I also like the fact that we did take him to Scarborough, uh, so we have people swimming up to him in the sea. And now he's at Lyme Park, where it was first filmed, and they're doing National Trust tours about wow. Pride and Prejudice with Mr. Darcy in the lake for the next six months. Um, drama was, you know, uh, I'm very passionate about, about drama. Obviously, I worked on ITV3 for a number of years, so I, I knew it had a lot of potential. And we're really, uh, we're really excited about the way it's going. I think um, there's, a, there's a deep pool for us to swim in. And, um, and you know, the, the viewers seem to be really responding. I mean, we've also had some research that, that only 40% of viewers have 
currently retune their free view boxes. So I think we've oh, yeah, still have to got... retune, which is a bit yeah, of a pain, Yeah, well, it? some do and some don't, but we weren't sure how many would have to retune. We had to do a little internal poll, and we sort of discovered internally probably eight out of ten people had to retune, and, and the research we've done is only about 40% have done that. So we st still think there's a long way to go. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Sure. It's early in the morning. Sure. <laughs> oh, I've got a final... Oh, there you go. Um, John Rolfe, um, Retort, Free Mental Media. Um, we do scripture comedy. Can, um, can you talk a bit about how you feel the balance uh, of original commissions might sit between really well-established brands that you might want to bring back, like Red Dwarf or Yes, Prime Minister, and I'm sure that works in other genres, and completely original commissions of new ideas? Um, I think, uh, obviously, on gold, up to now, we've, we've looked more at um, celebrating the archive. But, as I said, we're really excited about a brand-new scripted piece coming this autumn. And um, we're really hopeful that it will do very well. And I think, off the back of that, then we'll, we will be interested in looking at, at more. Um, it's... Uh, and, you know... As we've said with Dave doing Krakenori, you know, that again is new writing. Um, so I think that we are moving towards looking at more fresh and, and new stuff and bringing the audience along. Um, on Gold, it is harder because people have that concept that they go to Gold for, for you know, revisiting the, 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 the archive. But I think with the types of shows we're doing now, we are, we are moving that forward. Go on, yes. Hi, it's Helen Purvis from Night Eight and Management. Um, you mentioned key talent a bit earlier. I just wondered if there's any space, particularly in the factual area, for new or emerging talent at all. Um, I think probably yes. In, in there is. It might be that they're partnered with other people. Um, uh, also, in factual, as I said, we're doing more. Um, uh, co-production and pre-sale where we're, we're top-up funders. So we're not always going to be the lead on the choice of talent. Um, and it's then, uh, for us, I think, about the stories and how the stories really resonate and that the talent um, is authentic and, and uh, really, you know, understands and knows their topic because that passion, I think, really comes through on screen and the viewers know if it's not. No, no, if it's fake, so they know if it's not real. Yes. Emma, good morning. Do you, you talked about a 10% increase in overall. Do you see a difference in the pattern for pay as opposed to your free channels? Which are growing fastest, and what do you think are the factors driving it? I think it's balancing out now. I mean, it was more, um, probably more in free view with digital switch over, but now, now we're switched over. Really, it, it's, it's more balanced out now, and it's just about, you know, trying to get incremental growth now against uh, other channels rather than pulling more audiences into that switch over position, which last year was. So last year, you know, I think in terms of, that amount of growth was an exceptional year, um, and we were very lucky to, to you know, be one of the big beneficiaries of that. Um, but um, uh, this year, it, it sort of evened out in between pay and free. Thank you. And any more? Cool. I think if you've learned one thing, it's that there's a great episode of Crack and Ori coming up. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and beyond that, that it was well worth avoiding missing Kevin Spacey, not avoiding, missing Kevin Spacey. Emma Tennant, thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you.